Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in for today's video. Really excited today to be joined by Chris Giles, who's the founder of The Factory. Chris has a real passion for helping people figure out how to be more successful in their job search, how to treat it as more of a, a sales exercise. Um, so Chris, thanks ever so much for joining us today. Great to have you on. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. It's a real pleasure. Excellent. Do you want to just tell people a little bit about you and your business, just uh, by way of context? Sure. Just for an introduction. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on this. And I think it's so important in this time what you're doing to help people sharing information. So let me give you a little bit of context to who I am, and then we'll jump into it. I've been a serial entrepreneur, and, and as I realized I was helping people build their careers, or for that matter, helping companies and helping their employees, I realized how important it was for people to end up in the right spot. So we created the factory. The name of the company pretty much simplifies what we're looking to do. We changed the name from a factory FAC to FAK because we realized that people needed more knowledge. The more knowledge people had, the more comfortable and powerful they were. And we changed the Y to an I because it was all about how each individual was their own factory. So within that, we did everything we can and we are to this day with training and recruiting to try and help people be in the right spots, including, I might add, a digital resume we created called Persona. It's at personacv.com. And it's the idea that the resume, which was created, created by Leonardo da Vinci in, I think it was 1842, is, is long gone. We need to move on to this digital age where things like this and we share information. So I'm here to support others as they grow their career because I feel I have the ability to help them from my successes to build their successes. That's a little bit about me. Fantastic. Thank you. No problem. I know when I talk to candidates, uh, you know, one of the things that people seem to really struggle with is how to reach out to people effectively. How, how do you do that? For a lot of people, it feels like it's outside their comfort zone. Yeah. Do, do you have some uh, tips and suggestions around that side of things? Well, as you mentioned, I feel that getting a job is like doing sales. And so in sales, we're re we understand that the, the negative or objection that's placed is obviously going to be there. And I think the first thing I'd ask candidates to do, especially now, is to recognize that. And therefore, the number one thing you want to do is place yourself in the right job that you should be. Your application of you to that job is exactly what they're looking for. So they're looking for you and you're looking for them. And number two is in terms of the reach outs, respectful, consistent, and with some information that's going to help the other person. If your compassion is not for them, then they won't really see the need to take on another person they have to manage. They want you to manage you coming in. That's how I would say to them. So if uh, you can communicate as much as possible, but it's always the idea that respect to them. Absolutely. Yeah. And that whole being able to act autonomously and, and take responsibility for yourself. I'm hearing that from so many recruiters at the moment. I think it's a, a real um, characteristic. We're, of we're all in this together, but we are all individual units in this together. And so therefore it'd be like a tug of war and it's us against COVID, I guess, at this point in time, before it was us against your mortgage or it was us against, now we have the mortgage and COVID. So yeah. you're, everybody's got, and, and you can think about that pulling and you, you are, you've seen that image of a tug of war and, and the minutes, if somebody just walked away from the line that, 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 you know, it's not going to work. And mm. I think it's most important you as a, as a job searcher, as a candidate out there that's listening, sell yourself. Be aware of where your strengths are. Don't worry about your weaknesses. Try not to make those your priority. Find your strengths, and those will overcome your weaknesses and put yourself in a spot to help the other company. And Terrific. therefore, all of these things seem easier when you think about it that way. Definitely. Yeah. So if you were advising a candidate on what they should focus on right now in order to, to succeed in their job search, what would be the kinds of activities you would be you know, recommending? Well, I mean, I think, again, goes back to the sales process, and, if it, and I'll be consistent with this because I think it'll help. We've only got a short time. Let's be focused on exactly what we want to do. We want to search out the right opportunities that fit us. So make sure we search out those companies and we research them and understand them. Read about their about us. Know their website. Look at their founders. Are you going to be able to speak the same language? Then once you target, now you're targeting specifically a person within that company. It is okay to reach out to somebody in that, and understand who the parties are in that company using LinkedIn and tools of this nature. But then once you do that, maybe you might want to ask some different people in the organization. If you could ask about the organization, they might tell us to explain it. So therefore, when you talk to that target person, you already have some information. 
And as you're going through the opportunity of trying to sell yourself, think about that logically. And don't try and push on, I have a black shirt, I have guitars, I have this, you will like me. But more, I think I understand from your your ad and what you're looking for, and I think I comprise those t talents that you're looking for. I'd love the opportunity to discuss whether my fit and your fit will allow us both to be successful. So the language is always about them being successful with your addition to the team. And every conversation should lead to something. If you get no response back, you need to improve your communication. It's that simple. So sales is an exercise in trying to have the person help. help by, by, and I see sales as not as selling something, but as helping your customer to buy. And in this case, it's helping the, the, the customer, in this case, the, the hiring person, understand who you are as a candidate and how you can help them. And I think there's... If, whoever you are, whether you're a computer programmer, a salesperson, a general manager, a president, whatever area of the spectrum you're falling in, you know you and you should know where you fit. And if you're lousy, fix that stuff. <laughs> but most people aren't lousy. They're pretty great. So I, I think it's just about packaging the sale, building your brand, and proposing it. There's so much we could talk to, but we only got 10 minutes, so I'll be careful. Yeah. And I know, you know, you, you – believe very strongly in making the whole job search process a lot more like a sales uh, process. Any other areas that you would sort of draw that, that parallel and that you'd advise people to focus on? Data collection, certainly data collection. So I would certainly work with an Excel spreadsheet or something of that nature, maybe even an online uh, tool that would allow you to be able to manage that. Uh, you should, you know, it's funny, people uh, would com communicate with me and my previous companies and would like a job, and they didn't get the job. It was always funny. I had two people call me back after the interview and say, I want to work for you at some point in time. And of those two people, only one of them ever called me back, and he called me back in six months. He goes, I still feel the same way I did. The other guy just said it because he needed the job. But the one guy said it because he wanted and he ended up working for me, okay? And so even if, if let's say you want that job, and they don't give it to you. They're going to be hiring, for, unless you're going for the president of the bank, and there's one president, he's going to be there for five years. If you're going for a most people's position, which is there's 50, uh, I would describe it, at any point in time within 50 miles of you, then you make sure you let them know, I, I'm coming back. I want to watch your, I'm going to, because you can, you should be looking at, a back. I'll be quicker on this. In the Excel spreadsheet, you can put in the links for the jobs. You can put in your comments for the jobs and the activities you've done. You can create a simple spreadsheet that can be used to gather the right information that suits you and suits what you're thinking about. That way, you'll feel progress. That way, you'll feel like you're moving somewhere. And at the same time, you'll have all those emails and contacts all in one space so you can go back and contact them. That's sales. Yes. Sales, all about being organized, all about being accepting that you have to take some rejections in order to get to a success and i know job seekers that sort of set themselves up to be able to track that performance and, and feel like they are achieving something even when it might feel like they're not you know can really help so and then i, I the last thing i would say is is people always want feedback i always felt they wanted feedback and and that's part of it. And I think you should give your own feedback after you're finished the interview. That's one of the things people are always like, what did you think? I'm like, in other words, how bad did I think is really because I didn't tell you good things. You're not, I didn't tell you you're coming back. So it's not good. I think you should give your own feedback and that should be stored in the Excel spreadsheet as well. And you'll notice I didn't bring my energy. I didn't bring this. Next time I'm talking to Tony, Tony's going to feel my energy. I want him to feel that. That's not fair that I came in down and tired and hung over. I don't know. I wouldn't know if I'd hire me. So. <laughs> Yeah. One more thing about that. I, one more thing I used in the Excel spreadsheet too, is I broke it down into like three columns and I wrote down communication and I ranked myself from one to five. I wrote it down on uh, my execution. How well did I answer? How well did I execute for them? And how much was the relationship? And I've measured those on one to five. If you think about those, those are the three things they're going to hire you on. They'll fix, they'll tell, teach you about the company, but they won't be able to fix those three things. So Chris, some really fantastic advice today. Thanks ever so much for your time. If people would like to find out more or contact you, is, is there a, a web address or would you like people yep. to message you on yeah, LinkedIn? I would say for anybody out there searching for a job, uh, check out uh, www.personacv and make up your own digital resume. Jump in the new world. That'll get you a job when you send over three videos and some information about yourself. And number two, it's www.thefactory.com. You'll probably put it in the notes, I'm sure of it. But I think for everybody okay. out there, 
persevere, be strong. It's your world. You control it. Be your pilot. Have a thank you so much, Tony. Terrific. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.